What I want to talk about in this video is a cornerstone in every field of medicine, and that's the differential diagnosis. Depending on how you are exposed to differential diagnosis, you might think it's the worst thing in the world, but it's actually a critically important skill. First things first, let's talk about why the differential diagnosis is important. Essentially, it's because making the correct diagnosis is difficult. The rate of misdiagnosis in medicine ranges between 5 to 15 percent, depending on the field. So think about that for a second. Up to one in five diagnoses are incorrect. One in five. Why is it so hard to make the correct diagnoses, even in today's high-tech and evidence-based world of medicine? A part of it is that we're always making decisions based on incomplete and sometimes incorrect information. And that's, you know, due to the constraints of time, improper data gathering, or the limits of medical knowledge itself. Another part of it is because we're only human. And we're subject to all the flaws in thinking and decision making that any human is, such as recall bias, overconfidence, confirmation bias, groupthink, um, and the list goes on. And so this is why the differential diagnosis is useful, because purposely generating a differential helps prevent us from making these errors in judgment and decision making. So let's say you have a 60-year-old male coming into the ED with acute chest pain. What do you think he has? You probably want to say NMI, and you might be right, but he's probably just as likely to have a number of other illnesses such as pulmonary emboli, pericarditis, cardiac tamponade, pancreatitis, GERD, cholecystitis, peptic ulcer disease, panic attacks, etc. You don't want to focus on a heart attack so much as to not think about the other possibilities, as this could cause you to miss the diagnoses and seriously affect the patient's care. The process of generating, generating a differential diagnosis helps you think about the case broadly so that you are less likely to make this error. There are numerous mnemonics out there to help you generate a differential diagnosis, but the one I use is I Vindicate. So here you can see the I Vindicate, in which I stands for idiopathic or psychiatric, B stands for vascular, and that includes hypoxia, ischemia, or infarction. I stands for infectious, inflammatory, or invasive, and I can either be systemic or non-systemic. N stands for neoplastic. D stands for degenerative. I stands for iatrogenic, so that includes drugs and toxins, for example. C stands for congenital, and that includes anatomical variations and anything hereditary. A stands for allergic or autoimmune. T stands for trauma. And E stands for endocrine or metabolic, and that includes renal and hepatic failure. Let me show you how I would use this mnemonic to generate a differential diagnosis. So for our 60-year-old man with chest pains, for I, it's idiopathic or psychiatric, so maybe he's having a panic attack. For V, it's vascular, so he could be having an MI. He could be having PEs or a AAA rupture. For infectious, maybe he's having pericarditis or pancreatitis or cholecystitis or peptic ulcer disease, or even GERD. He's not likely to have anything neoplastic because of the acute presentation. It's also not likely degenerative because of the acute presentation. Same for, thing for iatrogenic, same thing for congenital. For autoimmune, maybe he's got something like Dressler's or lupus. For trauma, maybe he fell and broke a rib, so rib fracture, or a chest contusion. And for endocrine, maybe he has arrhythmia from electrolyte imbalances or uh, uremia. What we've done is we've taken a patient's chief complaint in HPI in order to generate a differential diagnosis using the I vindicate mnemonic. What you want to do now is use other pieces of information to break that differential down into a more practical list that you can use to plan out the patient's care. So think about the patients that are risk factors, their location of pain, their past medical history, their medication lists, their social history, their family history, their physical exam, and take all these considerations in order to narrow down your differential diagnosis into that more practical list. So for example, if a patient has hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and other cardiac risk factors, you want to more strongly consider vascular causes. If a patient has a fever, you might want to more strongly consider an infectious cause. 
One method I've seen used to do this is to break down a differential diagnosis into a top three more likely causes that are less severe and a top three less likely but more severe causes that you would not want to miss. Top three in each is a nice practical number that doesn't limit your options too much, but at the same time doesn't make you go hunting for zebras. So let's say, let's go back to our patients. Let's say he doesn't have a fever, but does have a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes type two, GERD, and he recently fell on his chest while coming into the hospital for an annual physical two days ago. Given that history, under the top three more likely causes, I would put rib fracture, chest contusion, and GERD. While under the top three less likely but more severe causes, I would put MI, PE, and peptic ulcer disease. What we're left with now is a practical differential list that we can use to determine what tests and courses of management we want to undertake. In the beginning, it's definitely slow and somewhat annoying to have to go through making a differential diagnosis each time, but as you do it more and more, you'll find that you can start to make some pretty good differential diagnosis lists in your head almost instantaneously, which is going to help you tremendously as a clinician. The reason being, anyone can make the easy diagnosis. It's the people who can make the difficult and unclear diagnosis that distinguish themselves. And you're more likely to do that if you're good at creating a differential diagnosis. So that's it for the differential diagnosis. Here are our take home points. Please take a few seconds to pause and to read over these points for a nice review. Thank you.